hey, hey, happy Amazon Live Friday, everybody. Thank you for joining me, Terry Edmonds, and this is on our sandal making supplies list today. So uh, today you're gonna see, I did a video called Sandal Making, Five Tips to Making Your Own Sandals. And I originally did it in collaboration with Tandy Leather. And today I have decided to show you all of the supplies that are available on Amazon. So this is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, uh, in the, I'm going to cover a, the first five steps, which is how to pick your design and then how to select leather, how to sew, how to paint, and then how to assemble. So primarily the supplies are going to come up in a, you know, a couple minutes. You, if you're watching this on the YouTube replay, you can scrub forward. Um, otherwise this is for sheer entertainment. Thank you so much for joining me. And please feel free to write in a comment. I will try to strain to see it from here, <laughs> but know that I appreciate you and thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so this was this awesome Sandel video. It's summertime. I just covered the moccasin masterclass last week and I thought what a great time to follow that up with the sandal making class. Um, I am this is a, these are a part of the collection that I made for that video and you're going to see those in the video, but I'll also be covering just a couple of those things here today. All right. Uh, this is our, we're going to be covering all of these different things, including, like I said, how to pick your leather, everything from toe straps to the right sewing machine to sew leather and um, where to find the good sewing material. So stay tuned. All right. If you are watching this on the Amazon re on the replay on YouTube, there is a link right here. If you click that link and it looks just like this, it's going to take you to my website, terryedmonds.com. And uh, you're going to click the Amazon uh, shopping link. It'll take you here to my Amazon store, sandal making supplies. You click on that and it will take you to the full list of supplies. This is your active shopping list, and these are the items that we're talking about today. If you wanna click through on one of those, it will take you to all of the details. And this happens to be the uh, suede cording that I use in my toe straps. I, I really like the leather, uh, it's called leather lacing. Um, I like them, they last a really long time. It takes a long time to wear them out. But I also, and I think they give them a little bit more of a dressy look. And, but I also like the um, nylon webbing. And I'm gonna show you guys this today. I ordered this uh, finally for myself. And they're making them in uh, amounts that you can actually use. This I was one of the smallest, but I'm gonna use this a lot because I have a shoe repair business. Anyway, so, and I'll use that on my sandals, but it does give it a more casual look. All right, so moving forward, I am known for helping people with hard to fit feet, especially women. Um, I'm super grateful that I'm here to help them, but I do have clients that wear a size 16, uh, quadruple E for sure. It's actually, their feet are so big that I have to make them custom. So I just grab a piece of paper and sketch their foot, get some measurements here, and then design the shoe for them, which is so awesome. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of girls looking for something that's feminine and nice and delicate, but nothing in her size. So when we end up you know, making her something that's fun and sparkly, you know, how beautiful she feels. So that's always a real joy. And for example, I think we're on to this. Let's check it out here. Oh yeah. So I also back in 2007, I was voted best place for Paris Hilton to find shoes because Paris Hilton wears a size 11. And given that she's aged a little bit, it might even be a little bit bigger because our feet do grow as we age. So that's super fun. All right. Um, this is a really fun one. This is a design that I made here. It's this was the original uh, style that I made for the video that you're gonna see um, in the sandal making masterclass. But I also uh, just finished this in a wedge for a client and I think it turned out really nicely. Um, all the same materials except for I just built up this um, heel for her to make it a little more dressy. So that was really fun. She was attending a wedding out here in Hawaii. So how appropriate. 
Okay, so we're just gonna get right to the nuts and bolts because we have a lot of stuff that we're gonna cover today. Um, picking your design. So there are, when, you're, when it comes to a sandal, you can do anything. I mean, the sky is the limit. <laughs> Um, I personally like because I, I want my shoes to resell and so I have to pick designs that are you know sometimes a little more conservative like somebody might like something kind of neutral um, especially because mine costs a little bit you know it's a custom shoe so I definitely sell a lot of the black a lot of the brown I like to put some rhinestones on them this is a Swarovski crystal this is called Volcano and I don't know if it translates in the camera, but um, they're really nice. They go from like a red, it's a borealis is what they call a rhinestone that has multi-colors in it. So uh, this is the Volcano. And these are kind of my basic styles. I've been making shoes since forever, it feels. <laughs> and you know, they're pretty classic. You can wear them a lot and they kind of go with everything. So I like this design. And all I've really done is taken a flat shoe and built it up into a wedge. All right. Um, but then I thought, you know, I mean, you're not limited. For instance, I have taken other shoes that maybe a client didn't want this shoe anymore. And I thought it was super cute with this little toe piece. And then it's, you know, it had the strap. So I just disassembled it. And let's see if I have the parts in here. Anyway, um, I disassembled it, make a pattern. Oh, there it is. No. Well, it's just, you disassemble the item, trying to keep, if you can't get your upper straps out of the shoe, when you do cut it, make a note that you need a little extra, you know, half inch for uh, room for error. But you can take any of your favorites and make a flat sandal out of it. So, you know, really have fun with it. Uh, I happen to have this client who is getting married in September and she has a size, I think she was a 13, but she's about a five wide. So I went ahead and this is what I recommend for everybody. Once you pick your design, then make a pattern of your foot. Let's see if that shows well enough. It's kind of hard with the lighting, but uh, I made marks as to where I'd like to have her straps land. And then before I make the pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and I'll just design the shoe around it. It's that simple. Um, so anyway, that's one of the gals. And then the other gal, this is her foot. I don't know if that, if you can really see that very well, but, uh, that is a very wide foot and I guarantee you, I mean, I sold wedding shoes for since 2001 in my shop, if the shoe fits and, um, you know, there's just no delicate wedding shoe that fits this wide of a, of a foot. And if you have a wide foot, you know that. So, um, this, this says that the world's your oyster. You can make anything you want. All right. So, uh, that's what I do. And um, kind of the same thing, uh, like this one, I'm making this for myself. This is gonna go with this new bathing suit that I um, got that we're gonna cover in the beach video next week. And I'm going to go ahead and add um, some blue turquoise um, rivets in it. And I think that's gonna be super cute. Kind of has a Southwest look, but the bathing suit does too. It's dark blue, light blue, and some fun colors. So that's for me. And I just basically, you know, I know that this pattern fits my foot, so I use it for all my sandals. And of course in Hawaii, I wear sandals all the time, so I really do experience whether they're comfortable, this material's really comfortable, that we're gonna cover later. So when picking your design, this was the actual original design that I became most known for, and it's called the Hot Biscuit. And what I like about it is that these straps aren't connected other than with this toe piece. Okay, and so those straps, they're crossed like this and they move, you know, they adjust like this around your foot. So this gal that I'm designing this shoe for, I'm actually doing this design for her because her foot was so wide that you want it to be able to hold the toes in a little bit because your feet, otherwise your feet spread. 
so it'll be uh, it'll be really nice that'll hold her foot in we're doing black and see these are the straps so I made I'm making custom straps for her I'll cut these out I'll pick my leather and then I'll lay my pattern on the leather cut them out and you'll see that all in the video so I won't bore you with it here okay this happens to be where did I just put that hold on so this is a cute one it's dirty because I've been wearing them but this is a beach sandal and these are kind of the turquoise rivet idea that I'm going to do on my new little red one and these are so easy once you make one they're, they're so fast you can just rip them out <laughs> so you could do a whole bunch of really great 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 stuff if you want to have your girlfriends over and do like a party or something like that anyway so this is that shoe and I just absolutely love it and in this picture I'm wearing it with my cute bathing suit cover-up that I thought went really well with that anyway you can't it, it didn't translate right sorry um, but we'll cover that in the beach video next week all right so I went online and I thought I just want to see you know I've really been studying like the Egyptians and the Romans and stuff like that right now and their their footwear and this happens to be a getta. I used to make these custom for my Japanese clients here on Maui. And this is actually a, uh, there's a formula, a real mathematical formula that the Japanese do to make this getta. And it was originally made um, to keep them above like the muddy streets. So very interesting. They still get worn. Um, I have clients that have, um, they still do their bone dance and so they have their, maybe their passed down kimonos and so we've taken fabric to make them look like that but I, I thought that was just kind of fun, I'd throw that in. I like to see what people wear over the ages. Um, so then this was also, I did a search for some Roman footwear and I mean there are so many things. This one they made it into a Nike, it has a Nike swoosh on it. <laughs> But one of the reasons why I'm touching base on these old school kind of sandals is because back then they didn't have manufacturing plants with molded forms that give you these rubber heels and arch supports and all of that. They had to find stuff that they had that they could wear every day. So that translates to you and me, that person that just is at their home. This is a DIY video and what kind of comfort were they trying to wear what kind of ideas can you come up with and you know I still get people that get their gladiators repaired you know the fun shoes and they're still making gladiator style shoes but in high heels and stuff so anyway I thought these were kind of fun and I just want to point out like this is a it's kind of hard to see far away but do your own google search there's so much out there eyes are just screenshots um, but they have some really pretty um, leather tooling on them and uh, we'll cover that but um, it'd be kind of fun to make this shoe and then tool it well you'd actually tool it before you put it together but I, I like the tooling part it's the fun part okay and then here were some more I thought this was what I'm so surprised about is that let's go to the next one wait here this was the Japanese oh yeah in Hawaii I did a search for Hawaiian shoes and actually the very first shoe that I showed you with these straps that cross that style is what the very first sandal was out here it was big Hawaiian feet being held into these shoes that almost looks like the getta and um, anyway I thought that was kind of fun so there we go. And then this one I thought was really beautiful. This is this gorgeous garment on this uh, pharaoh on this wall painting in Egypt. And I like it's the flat sandal and it's got this kind of a, a woven leaf design on it. And I think that that would be really, really comfortable. Right in my video, you know, in my show, we're doing a leather with a, a leather and it's comfortable but it would be really nice having that woven leaf. I think it's so elegant looking. So they used to, I'll show you in the next picture here, this shoe, this is the Egyptian shoe as well. And I, I like this design. I think that's really flattering on a foot. This design like this and this is so easy to make. What is it? It's a pattern, a slit here, a slit here, a hole punch here, and then you just make this to fit your foot. 
tie you make a strap here and then put this strap across it and tie it on right there and then you'd have a sandal what's really funny about these well not funny but I didn't have a picture of it but they used to take gold they look like bullet casings and they would wear them on the tips of their toes with these sandals so it was very flamboyant but actually the uh, Egyptians used shoes as a symbol of status so a lot of the people walk barefoot um, this is also an Egyptian sandal I think this came from Tutankhamun's uh, tomb and it's just beautiful but what they uh, some civilizations did is they did a design of their enemy and so they would step every time they stepped they were stepping on the face of their enemy <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think that painting the soul is super fun and all they've done is taken a regular shape but pointed the toe. So really you can do anything with this flat shape. It's just great. And I really like painting the bottom of the shoe. I think I'd like to do more of that. I did that on these and boy, it's so rewarding and so fun. And I think even I put a gloss on top of this but I think you could paint anything on here and it would still last for a while for sure. This will take a long time to wear off. So there we go. Great designs, don't, don't be shy. So I use this as an example because you could do things like putting a lace detail on it. You know, you could paint the sandal, you could have this as straps and paint it. Um, but everybody's doing really that basic, basic flat. And then, okay, so I put this in here because um, not that my fiance wouldn't look great in that, but <laughs> this is from the Getty Museum. They put this picture out and it just astounds me that these men were able to march for so many miles and carry all this heavy equipment and just wear a flat sandal. But I do think that these straps were not affixed permanently. They were able to kind of move with the foot. So I thought that was kind of fun. All right, so now let's go to... Um, uh, picking out our tools. I am showing you guys this. I covered this last week. This um, toolkit is being offered for about a hundred dollars right now and it has everything you need to make these sandals and more. Okay, so it's got um, the tools which we're gonna the hand carving tools which we're going to look at and that's what I used for this sandal as well as this sandal right here. They were all these little hand tools and then um, they cover the mat, which is what you're seeing right here, uh, having a nice cutting mat. And um, they've got some gloves, but they've also got rhinestones. Look at that, a whole rhinestone set. And I think they've got, um, they've got the, some thread in here. We've got some carving tools. We've got a nice mallet. And I believe they have the scissors, um, although I, I'm gonna, this is just an econo pack. This is something that you could do at home, not very costly, you could entertain the kids, entertain yourself, not worry about them, you know, kind of damaging things because it's such a little investment. But even these punches, then they've got the hole punches, they're just an awesome kit. So that's an easy way to go. <clears throat> this happens to be um, on just my hand tool station but I have all of the same items. Maybe a few more stamps, but um, yeah. So they make some really cute flower designs, some uh, all kinds of great things. You can do it with your name, you can do pictures. This is what uh, we're gonna be using. That's this tool that I, we used right here on this one. And those are included in that $100 pack. Aloha, Carol Miller, thank you. Happy Friday. Okay, so this is this mat and I'm showing it in this pink with this nice little cutter as we saw in the last video. I do have one of those nice long cutters which I won't use it when I'm doing a sandal strap because they're so delicate. You know, I wanna make them look really nice. I don't wanna have rough edges. I want it to look professional. So this is what it looks like. I make my leather first. I draw my pattern on it and then I do a nice cutout and then I'll go ahead and sew, sew them together. I do recommend sewing your straps. Um, they hold on, they hold together much better. 
And now with the genome, uh, the Genomi HD 3000 that we're going to look at today, it just goes through all of these super easily. Uh, so this one's really fun. $40 on Amazon right now. And then also drafting your pattern um, using a really good uh, marking pen. With these, I do use a regular pen sometimes, but I that nice marking pen, this one's really great. It's kind of got a light silver to it. And um, I got this one from Tandy, but I did put in um, some other references. They're selling this pen on Amazon for $7. And if you're gonna do a lot, maybe get a couple of them, or at least try it out and see. All right, so let's keep going. Choosing your leather. So this is really fun part of the process. Sometimes I'll draw my picture first to make sure I've got exactly the look I'm going for. Um, and to decide my colors, because you have so many things with which to choose. So we have, um, well, let's use this as an example. We're gonna choose the inside leather, the complementary color, choose what the outside's gonna be. Then you wanna figure out what your design is gonna be. And then you also are gonna put on some decorative thread and maybe do a cute uh, colored tie. So there's a lot of thought into this. You know, um, it does help to kind of draft it ahead of time, like I said, so choosing the leather. Uh, either way, depending on which way you're gonna go. So for instance, this is the suede with the inside and then the smooth leathers on the outside. Otherwise, you could reverse it and do the suede on the outside and the leather on the inside. But either way, you're going to need a leather that's a little bit strong because they stretch. And you can, let's see, I know I have it. So this is that leather. This is like a three ounce, which is a really nice weight. It does get, it bends and becomes, you know, flexible, but it still, it's got some strength that doesn't stretch. This is a pig. I think this is a pig hide. So um, it's obviously not tanned, so that's kind of nice. You, the, you can do whatever you want. You can dye this, you can paint it. Um, I, I usually do a mix of both. So very nice, I like this leather. I would incorporate this in no matter what you've got. You can get this dyed in different colors. It can come already pre-dyed for you. I like the neutral though. So that's fun. And then we have, so here we go. You can do, you know, for this gal, for this wedding, believe it or not, she's doing black and red. So I'm making hers are going to have the, um, I think we're doing actually, yeah, we're doing red on the inside, black on the outside. I'd have to look at the instructions, but you just want to incorporate one of each. So that's fun. And this is, you can get this in all kinds of colors. I think um, this is just one of the varieties that you're going to see these in that sandal making masterclass. I made every single one of these. This one happens to be the, the pink suede out. This one, I painted this to match a material that I really liked. Then of course I did the red. That was for this, uh, this guy here. Uh, we did the gold straps. This is what that looks like. And then some purple. I also did a fabric one that was really fun. I took some of that kimono fabric and did a, a that style. Black, brown, and the beige. So this was the brown. I did it with a cute little um, flower rivet design. Anyway, so lots of options. Uh, I'm showing you guys the uh, lamb skin. So lamb skin is very thin. That's why you don't want to make the sandal straps strictly out of just the lamb skin. It'll be so loose and floppy, it won't be worth your time. But it, they make them in so many great colors. So we're showing here, in this one, it's a 12 by 18. That's not very big. But most of the hides actually come in pretty big pieces. Like I've already chopped this one apart and look at how big it is. I mean, I could still get, you know, a, a cup, maybe a handbag or two out of that. Um, but I love these colors. They are so much fun. I always just wish I had an excuse to make more, but a lot of people buy black and beige. So anyway, those are my fun extracurricular activities. All right, so let's move on. So again, double check your sizing. All right, so this is either of these leathers. They're both being offered by Reed. 
Uh, this one happens to be uh, 12 by 24 and they don't have a price on them. Okay, yeah, so on here they're offering about $35 and they're probably also about two feet by two feet, let's just say that. When you get into these bigger hides, these usually sell five foot by about four and a half foot. They're really, really big rolls, okay? So again, but you can get something like this in that giant roll for like $150. It's ridiculous how affordable they are. So I always like to buy the big rolls so I can have an excuse to make more projects. So we've got uh, pig skin and then we've got the lamb skin. Uh, this is probably a deer tanned cow hide. This feels like it's cow. It's a little bit thicker. Um, and then again, even though it's a little bit thicker, I still uh, wouldn't use it by itself. I think that's pretty similar to what you're seeing here on the reed. So reeds offered in navy, light brown, dark, but I'm sure you can find black. Okay, so that's really fun. And I like to make handbags out of that soft, uh, supple leather. All right, so this is the veg tanned leather, leather three to four ounce. That's this one right here. It's uh, they're offering a pre-cut cowhide, a uh, full grain veg tan for tooling, holsters, knife sheath, carving, embossing, stamping, and dyeing. And they give you options. So you can buy uh, two by two, um, you can do 10 to 12 square feet. I mean, it's awesome. They have everything. It's so great. And they're showing the color, but it's all the same. And I believe it was uh, free shipping if you have Prime, so that's pretty cool. All right, so those are the leathers. Now, uh, the glue, we always talk about our master's glue. It is the best glue, it's available, it's affordable. If you're on the mainland US, they'll ship right to your door. And this is what I like to use. It has a brush in the lid, so it does stay you know, nice. Uh, the small jar, you can get about a pair, well, maybe one pair of athletic shoes out of it. Um, if you're using it for some sandals, again, you could probably get one sandal out of it. So uh, you can buy a little bigger can, which would be great if you've got a group of people working at the same time. Okay, so then we've got the shears. This is my very favorite pair of shears. It makes the job so much easier. I've had these for so many years. And <laughs> here we go. So I like them, I have not sharpened these since I bought them. They are, you, you can do that, but I just love, it gives me a nice, I mean, effortless. And I, like I said, I've used them for so many years. They're offering them for 40. I think that's a really good deal. And getting a nice straight line. I don't have, you know, little rivets made from the uh, shears becoming dull. And I've used them on so many things. I've even cut sandpaper with these. <laughs> But you know, anyway, I have to, I work. All right, so the next step, step number two or three is sewing your straps together. Okay, so here's the fun part. Now, look at all these fun color threads. I mean, it just makes me wanna make something with all these colors, oh my gosh. So pick your color thread, that's fun. And we are going to look at the Janome 3000. I'm actually doing a full uh, Amazon review on the Janome, so we're not going to do too much, but I'm going to show you how nice this machine is. We haven't done this yet together. So this is how it's packed, you know, how it comes. We have this nice case. Voila. And it is so simple. Uh, it's got a nice, this is the, uh, the directions here. So it's got this wonderful little chart here that tells you exactly the stitch that you're looking for and which level to put it on with these two little adjustments. Super easy to thread. And this one comes with all of these interchangeable little feet. And it is so, and they're stored in this really convenient little storage pack up here. Look at that, isn't that nice? So I love that. And then of course you've got all your little doodads inside here. And like I said, we'll go over that more um, when I do the Janome review. But for today, I'm also gonna show you, let's see if I made this as easy for myself as I thought I was going to. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, let's see. Um, okay, hold on. We are going to do this together today. I don't care. It's for the show. We're doing it. All right, I love it. Easy peasy. And I should have had this already done. Okay, you know what? It's not as easy as I thought. So um, it's just good I don't have my plug set up. But in the review that I've done for you guys, I've done every single stitch, stitched up, changed out every single foot. And I think right now they're offering this one for $4.29, which is such a great deal. It has this, this little switch back here that you just um, move this like that and the foot drops right off. It's so easy. And then you set the, other, the next foot on there. It grabs it with this little bar. And voila, it's so easy. I love this machine. And it's been pretty consistent. It's been easy to change out the bobbin on it. And I've had some bobbin thread, but God, I think that's every sewer's nightmare is the bobbin. All right. And then I also have over here, um, I also have the Singer um, Heavy Duty. This one I think I bought for about, uh, it was a couple hundred dollars back then, but nice machine. It works well, but I prefer the Janome 3000. And this is really nice, the um, video. Stitch along the sides. And I do them, sometimes I do it to add an element of decoration to it. This lime green sure is fun against that pink color. Yeah, but I, so that's what you'll see in the video. All right, so now let's move on to the decorating. This is so much fun, I love it. So this is probably the very best part of the whole shoemaking process is the decorating. And I like to offer some different choices. Last week we talked about this um, Al Stolman book. And um, again, I'm gonna refer to it to it because it has a, a great list of all the different ways to do this without buying the sewing machine, let's say. And you want a hole punch. You want to hand punch all those holes and do some decorative hand stitching on it. Um, you need the hole punch. Then of course, the sewing needle and the awl and all of that. And so they cover all of that here. They talk about how to handle the mallet, which we do end up using the mallet. This one here, I'm using a hole punch for a belt, and then I'm using a round quarter inch hole punch right here. And then I have my mallet. So let's grab those. These, now these are all included in that one package for $100. And that is so awesome. So that packet has a punch board. It also has a beautiful mallet. It's not the same as this one. This is a rawhide mallet. Um, the one that they have is really gorgeous. It's a white and just stunning. And so that's fun. And then I used this one in the video. This actually, this is a good example. This, this used to be, I did a simple angle right here. It had a pointed tip on it. That's kind of hard because we're looking at my black shirt. Uh, we'll try it like this. Okay, so there we had a, a sharp point. And I, it's hard to get those cuts just right and even. So I like to use this punch, which is actually part of a, it's meant for punching the end of a belt and to get that really nice curl. So I took this, put it right at the end of my corner there, and then punched it and got a pretty even uh, nice corner. So then from there, I would take some of these. And now that I think about it, I don't think I told you how to do this in the video, but to make this little toe piece, See, it's fun to have all the different colors and they definitely dress up the shoe more than that nylon webbing does. So um, I just make, I cut about a 10 inch strip, 10 inch strip, cut it in half. I make this little loop and this little loop goes right underneath like this and then just send this through. 
and then I line them up nicely so that they lie on top of each other well. And that's how I do all of my toe pieces. Again, it's hard with my black shirt here. Here, that's pretty. Look at those fun colors. I love those colors of rhinestones. They're gorgeous. So, uh, so the tooling. All right, so this strap here, I, I actually sell a lot of this one with this little flower design. It's just kind of simple. And I have used the flower, pretty, oh, there it is. So uh, this comes in that $100 packet, but they're also listed, um, oh, I like this book too, because it talked about tooling. All right, so, so all of these, little patterns were cut using first the swivel. This is called a swivel knife. And it actually, you swivel it as you're making your design. So when you're going around, you wanna really do your first imprint and you're swiveling that knife and cutting in there and you wanna go very slowly until you're really efficient with this. Then you'll come in and maybe do some little uh, flower designs I think I did that in this leaf here. And then you've got some other little patterns. And if even some of these, this little dented one, it makes the dents on the flower. But if you're not an artist on your own, you can get a book like this called Coloring with EcoFlow. And I don't have it on the shopping cart, but I'll add it later. This actually inspired me to do, this is a picture of a flower that they did and they were showing some of the different ways to apply the dye. And I was inspired by that. And that's what made me pick up and do this hibiscus in the red and the green. So I kind of followed what they did, but I really like it. It has so many awesome ideas. It makes you want to just do all of them. <laughs> um, some people get really amazing with their work, but I like some of the flowers. I probably would, um, use some of these designs maybe for a handbag like the outside of a bag i'd like to work with the uh, spray gun you know and do some neat handbag designs so these are gorgeous this is the same pattern here but they've just applied the dye and the finishing technique in different ways so there are so many different options you could do uh great for belts and things like that but don't be limited to just belts all right, so that is the coloring with EcoFlow. Sorry, I've got the light on that. And then of course, this is the other uh, catalog I was telling you about taking care of the tools. So uh, really important, if you are gonna buy something, grab this book. It's not that expensive. And this guy was the master of hand tooling. So it has everything, how to sharpen them and stuff. Okay, so again, here is a list of the oblong hole punches. I use a lot of these. Um, this large one is the one that I used for the side straps. So if you don't like to cut your own, if you're doing a leather, this happens to be a leather insole, not this crepe. This crepe is so easy, you can cut it with a razor knife. Um, but this is different. This leather, it, you have to actually take away some leather to make room for a new strap. You can't just squeeze it in between like I do on these. So I actually use the hole punch. This pre-cuts that hole for me. And then, you know, you stick your straps in, put your foot in, measure it properly, and then glue your straps down. So that here is a set of those. I really like those. I do use these for my belts. This is where you punch and then the tongue of the buckle comes up through that hole and then you bend the leather around it. So those are awesome. And this is also in that $100 pack. All right, Angelus paints. I love painting, of course. Any chance that I get to put paint on a shoe is so fun. <laughs> Angelus works really, really well. If you're going to paint the outside of the shoe of the strap, then you can just apply the paint directly. It'll hold, no problem. If you're gonna paint it on the footbed of the shoe, then I recommend using the Angelus either matte finish or the gloss finish on top of that so that it, it doesn't wear off as fast. Um, so that's great. Uh, Angelus, this is your basic pack here, but Angelus offers at least a hundred, uh, more than that, I know that, of different colors. You can get metallics, you can get 
really fun crazies. You can do neon, you can get glitter, um, you can do Louboutin red, um, all different kinds of fun colors. So uh, the sky's the limit. I love that. Okay, so we've got those. And here they're offering $60 for a set of 12. And those are the bigger bottles, I think. These are the four ounce bottles. I recommend just grab yourself, uh, this is a one ounce. And if you get the one ounce, then you can get lots of them and then pre, you know, mix your own colors. I love testing out colors and it's not a big investment or a risk because they're so affordable. I think they retail for $6.95. I sell them at my store. And then I do like to have the uh, painter's palette. Um, the, and also, let's see if I'm showing the palette as well. Uh, no, but uh, these are, let's go back if I can. Yeah, so these are the brushes, love them. I, I actually now use them. I have so many of these that I actually use, have some dedicated for shoe polish. I just did this boot yesterday that had all of this embroidery on it and it was white thread embroidered on a tan boot and the tan boot really needed to be polished and just using my cloth wasn't doing it. So I just grabbed a nice paintbrush and I went in there and just painted in between the threads with it and oh, it looks so sharp. It was so nice. Of course, once you've done that, it's dedicated to that. You'd have to really wash it with some soap and water to get that polish out. So I just, they're so affordable. I mean, they're offering a pack of 20 for $6.99 and they hold up really well. Even if you leave your brushes in the water overnight, they still, they're great. And then they give a little description on the back of how you can use each one of them. So love these. And then of course I bought these, which come in a pack of four and I use these a lot. So um, I needed the extra ones, but I like them. It's pretty fun. Okay, and that's a great thing to have in your repertoire for your arts and crafts. If you are not gonna do shoes, I mean, we did this fun uh, uh, little craft project on the deck for Valentine's Day. My fiance bought me these beautiful flowers and we just spent the day making these little fun magnets, you know, for the refrigerator as a memory of the night together, the day together. And so these acrylics can be used on pretty much anything. They are an acrylic. They're just an, a leather acrylic. And I actually, I like them. They're great. You can uh, really water them down and get a light finish on them, or you can leave them. I kind of, you know, built it up so you can kind of have that fun sort of like an oil painting look where you're building up the layers of paint so you can reuse them for other things is the point all right so then i'm also showing you the suede leather cords um it is leather lacing uh you can also do glove it's called um glove lacing that's what these are glove lacing and they're meant for a baseball glove so they're really thick leather and they're strong um, mine have to last a long time because there's customers buying them for me so they want to get a lot of wear so you can either do these kind which are a little more delicate or you can do the thicker one these fun colors here I like to have use these when I do my baby moccasins you know they're they're super colorful I usually um, I don't have it out here right now but I usually do the white soft deer skin and make this little baby moccasin and then put some really cute pretty um suede lacing on it they're a huge hit every christmas all right and then we have rhinestones so uh, rhinestones unlimited is a great company this one is coming from summer ray uh they're they're hot fix rhinestones and it's important that you're looking for, well if you wanna do this kind of a project, and I've done a lot of volume, that it's really great to get the hot fix. And what that means is that the back of the rhinestone has glue on it already. So, and I too was gonna to demonstrate this today, but I didn't get the electric set up. So I use a plate, I like a nice glass, glass plate. And then this one's nice because it's got the on off switch and it lights up to let you know that it's on, which is a new kind of an upgrade that they've gone with. Then I take my beautiful rhinestones and I actually had thought about putting these because I kind of need this color combination. I thought they might be kind of fun on here. I'll show you and see what we think about them. I 
have a plumbing company behind me if you guys can hear them. So I thought I could have done this and you know put some rhinestone sparkles on there. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go, I think that's kind of cute. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, so you wanna put them with the glue side down, okay? And I usually, you know, there's a nice little selection in there and they're facing, some of them are facing down. And then I usually get a couple of these at a time and I let them heat up and I let them heat up right on the glass plate. So again, I think this is an adult craft tool just because you wanna make sure that, that it's being used properly and that you're not you know, gonna get burnt on them. They get really hot. And you wanna make sure that somebody's not leaving it on. You know, I used to be notorious for leaving my curling iron on. And so you wanna make sure that you don't do that. <laughs> so uh, this is really nice and I have a couple of them. So once it's hot, you actually pick up the rhinestone. It won't right now because it's not hot but this rhinestone will stick in it and it heats up. And then you can see the glue kind of get hot here. Then you take it and you would actually press it right on the shoe and I kind of hold them down just to really squish them in there. And ultimately, that's what you get. I think they have music at the plumbing store today. It must, oh, it's Friday. Yeah, it's probably like casual Friday today. <laughs> All right, anyway, isn't that fun? So hot fix make sure you get the glue on the back otherwise you'll be picking them up with tweezers and it's a pain in the rumpus so uh these are really great i like the colors that they're offering and i think mine are um five millimeter that's what i usually get that's this size so you can see them Isn't, aren't those pretty i'll show you some fun colors here i did a nice lavender and a turquoise so all kinds of different combinations you can do uh, here is that set I picked another set that's got the hot fix wand this is called a wand and they have included this wire brush which is really nice because the glue can collect on the top so just cleaning that off with the wire brush really helps and then that one also comes with the tweezer pencil pickers uh, the brush cleaning kit, the wand setting tool. Uh, they're offering two different types, but I actually see a whole bunch of different wand heads here because you can get different size uh, rhinestones. And so this one comes with quite the choice. I like that. Wow. Okay, assembling the shoes. We're actually almost finished. This again is the Soltec Cloud. This is the Soltec Cloud uh, Soul material that's non-slip and this is the Soltec Cloud Smooth Crepe and that's what I use to make the soft surfaces and then the soling material is used for the bottom and it comes in all of these different colors so uh, they've got a blue, red, gray, like a cognac brown and I basically use white, black, brown and I do have some gray and uh, you just assemble everything together. All the instructions are in the video. So when you're watching that video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me here on Amazon Live. I really look forward to being here every Friday. It gives me a reason to put these fun things together and to be with you. So I think that's the end of our show. Yes, it is. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining me and aloha from Maui. Aloha.